Hi everyone! Today I'll be showing you how to make a macrame plant hanger using bobbiny cord. So I've got a matching kit to go along with this, so if you want to, you can stop this, buy the kit and then craft alongside at the same time. This tutorial is to do one like this blue plant hanger, so I'll be doing another at some point that looks a bit more like this yellow one, so the main difference is there's a lot more spirals there. And I have another tutorial as well to make a two plant hanger like that kind of burnt orange one. So if you've got the kit, you should have two different lots of lengths. And you can choose from loads of different colours. So we're going to start with a wooden ring and we're going to do some lark's head knots. So you'll get one strand, fold it in half so that the ends match up, and then double it up. And with the middle point, you use that loop to go through the wooden ring and then pull the ends through and pull it tight and that makes a lark's head knot. So if you've got the kit you should have two different bundles of two different lengths so some will be shorter than the others so we're going to alternate it between long and short ones and we're going to alternate which direction they go in as well which you'll see a bit more of in a second. So all of the long ones should go in one direction and all of the short ones should go in the other. So a good way to tell this is on one side there'll be a kind of more bobbly bit so the next one you do you're going to put the looped bit so it goes in the same direction as that kind of more bobbly side of it and then when you pull it through that looped section will be on the opposite side and that just means that they'll sit a little bit nicer together and just be really really nice and neat so then you're just going to keep doing this alternating between long and short cords and alternating which direction they go in so if you see as you pull it through the looped bit will be on the opposite side to where it started. Just like that. So once you're done with that bit, the next thing to do is some square knots, so that's like the top of that blue one. Because you've folded all your cords in half, you should have 12 cords now. So you're going to divide them into three groups of four, do a loop over the middle ones with the right hand side, and then the left hand cords go in front of that loop, behind the middle cords and up through on the right hand side. So you're sort of doing a big figure of eight around it. And then you pull it tight from each side while holding onto the middle cords to make sure that they stay really, really straight as you're tightening it. And that just makes it look much neater. That's half a square knot and to make a whole square knot you do the same on the left hand side. So a loop on the left over the middle cords, the right goes in front of that one, behind those middle cords and up through the left hand side and then you pull it tight and it's important as you pull it tight to hold on to the middle cords because they're filler cords so they should just be acting as if they're like a steel bar and you're doing your macrame around them. So I slowed down the last ones but this one's at regular speed so if you want to see it a bit slower just wind it back a little bit and watch it slow down again. If you don't keep those middle cords taut then it just looks a little bit messy and a bit less polished. So you do one on the right hand side, one on the left hand side and that makes one square knot. So we're going to do a total of three square knots at the top with all of those cords. So at the moment there's two, so there's kind of a zigzag shape going across the middle and that's how you know it's a square knot. So then we're going to do one more, so a big loop over the right hand side, that goes in front of the middle cords, left goes in front of that behind and up through the loop on the right hand side and then the same on the left hand side so a loop over the middle ones the right goes in front behind and up through that loop there try and make sure as you're doing it that it's pulled really nice and tight and it's looking neat like this so you kind of want a some lines going along the side of your piece of macrame and if there's any kind of gaps in it you can kind of pull those edge bits and just tighten it up like this as you go and that just makes it look a bit more polished. So 
So the next thing to do is leave a 10 centimeter gap and I would use something like a bulldog clip to mark this off and if you're buying a kit you'll get this in there as well. And then you're going to make sure that the middle cords are the shorter ones because as you're doing macrame the ones on the outside are doing all of the work so they're going to get shorter as you're doing all of the knotting so you want to make sure the shorter ones are in the middle just so they're not getting shorter as they go and sometimes it can help if you tie a little knot in them just to know that you're not working with those ones so unlike the top where you had four middle cords and four outer cords on either side with this we're going to have two middle filler cords and one cord on either side and we're going to do some spirals so spirals are basically like square knots although you don't do it on each side you just keep going on the right hand side rather than changing because when you change over that's what makes it a really nice flat bit of knotting so when you keep doing it on the same side it gives you a really gorgeous spiral So we're going to do 12 spiral knots on each section of four and you can always, if you get confused, you should have kind of lines going across the middle so you can count them like that just so that you know how many you've done and how many you've still got to do. So whereas with a square knot, one on each side makes one square knot with this, just one knot makes one spiral which I know is incredibly confusing. I'm just going to speed this bit up now so you're not watching me do it for like hours and hours but you can always go back to the start of this section if you need to see it a little bit slower. Once you're done with that bit you're going to get a bead and put that on the middle two cords. This is a good time to check as well that your middle ones are still the shorter ones because you never know as you've been doing all of the spirals sometimes they might have got shorter than the middle ones. So if that's happened then I just use this as a chance to swap them over. So if you've got the kit it comes with these beads and they've got really big holes on them so it's really easy to get them through but you can always use some you've got at home. It can just sometimes be a bit tricky. So you kind of twist them on like this and they should be quite easy to get through the other side. And then you're going to do the same on the other two sections. So rather than measuring the other ones with a tape measure, I would just measure them against that first one and make sure they're at the same height. Because sometimes when you measure with a tape measure, it will be a little bit off depending on where the knots fall at the top. So again, make sure that your shorter cords are in the middle and just put a little knot in them so you know which ones you're not using. And then just do the same thing again. So 12 spiral knots on this and then put a bead on. Again, I'm going to speed this bit up, but if you need to, just go back to the start of this section and see the spiral not slowed down.
Next thing to do is 10 more spiral knots underneath the beads. So again you want to make sure that the ones on the, in the middle are still the shorter ones, so with mine the outer cords are now shorter, so I'm going to swap them into the middle. So you just move them in between those middle ones and then spiral around them. So you want to make sure, if you're doing this especially, as you pull it tight, that those two cords that are around the bead just look really nice and uniform and just fold around it in a really neat way so it's even on each side. And then just continue doing 10 spiral knots on each of those. So I should have mentioned as well that the colour cord I'm using here is a baby pink bobbiny cord and the one next to it, the blue, is teal and then the yellow is lemon so if you want to buy the kit and you want any of these three colours just make sure you pop that in the order notes. When I'm doing macrame I have a clothes rail that I hang everything off and I use S hooks so I find that's a really good easy way to work with it because you want to make sure, I always tend to do it from something that's hanging because gravity really helps to make sure that everything's in the right places and it's the same height but you could always do something like if you get a little hook or a coat hanger or something like that and hang it off a very sturdy shelving unit that works quite well it's just always good to have a lot of free space around it so that you're not constantly bashing your hands so the next thing to do is leave 10 centimetres below all your spirals and then you're going to get two cords from one section and join them to the nearest two of the next section. So you're creating a new grouping. So now your outer cord should be your middle cords and you're going to do a couple of square knots with these new groupings. So this is just going to create a really nice little kind of basket for your plant pot to sit in. So just really nice and supportive of it. So remember when you're doing square knots, you do one on the right hand side and then one on the left hand side to make one square knot. So with this we're going to do three square knots in total on all of those new sections. So that makes sort of six if you're counting it as different knots, if that makes sense. So next you'll get the remaining two from one of those sections and join it to the nearest two of the next section. So it's creating kind of like a diamond shape with all of your cords and you're just going to do the same thing, so three square knots with this new grouping. And then turn it around and do the same thing on that last four chords. Then you're going to leave four centimetres and all of your cords are going to go back to their original groupings. So now the middle ones from that last group will be your outer cords again. So you're going to do another three square knots on each of these sections. And this will just make an extra kind of 
supportive base for your plant pot that should be about three quarters of the way down it depending on what size plant pot you put in there. So there's lots of different ways that you can finish it off that I'm going to show you how to do. So you can do a big square knot at the bottom, so kind of like you did at the top. So you're going to get two cords from each section to make new sections again, just so you've got an extra little crossover for your plant pot to be really supported in. So you just do one on the right hand side and then one on the left hand side just to make a really good strong solid base for your plant pot. So that's option one. Instead of that, if you've got really into your spirals, you could just do some really big spiral knots in the same kind of way underneath. So this sometimes gives it a really good finish, but sometimes it can look quite bulky. So the last thing that you can do is a gathering knot. So if you've ordered the kit, you should have an extra small piece of cord. So with this, it should be about 50 centimeters. So you create kind of a little loop and you should have a long bit and a short bit. So you make, a, you put the loop against the tails and make a fist around all of the cords. So that's the loop bit. And then with the tail, you wrap it around all of the cords. So it's going from the bottom up towards that loop and just make sure that you pull it as tight as possible but that you're pulling it to the same kind of tension every time so it's really nice and neat and just kind of stacked on top of itself. So when you get closest to the top then the end of that longer bit you're going to put it through that loop at the top. Pull it through like that and then you should have a little tail sticking out at the bottom so you pull that and that pulls that loop downwards with it. So then when you get to that point, pull the top bit as well so it doesn't have any slack and then keep pulling that bottom bit and that bit should disappear into it and that gives you a really good strong base. And this just gives it a more kind of like pulled together look at the bottom. And you can keep this really short if you like or make it a little bit longer like I have with this one. You can do, always do a plait as well like I've done with this yellow one. And that one just has a little gathering knot underneath the bottom of the plat. I'm an actor on the stage. I'm crying, laughing, coughing. I don't get good roles all that often. Like Nosferatu, Sansa Coffin. I'm like Philip Seymour Hoffman. Did you see me? I was an extra. Then test your plant pot in it. And then the next thing to do is just trim off any excess. Okay. And how it relates to nearly everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, then I'll be doing lots more and you can support me so that I can keep doing more of these by either my Patreon or my Ko-fi. You can find links to these on all of my social media accounts. And you can also buy kits and all sorts of things like that. And I appreciate any support, but I know times are tough at the moment. So it's very much appreciated, but also not expected. Thank you so much for watching and you can find me on absolutely everything at Darnit Workshops. Have a good day. Bye.